Tension is the enemy of recorder playing. In this lesson, we will look at two ways to reduce tension in holding the recorder. The fingering of the recorder is a very important technique we have to learn as early as possible. So the first principle is you don't have tension in the hand position. What does that mean? It means that you don't try to cover the holes with the fingers and many people start with the thumb, first finger, second finger, third finger, fourth, fifth and sixth and so on. And they aim to try to get the recorder hole right in the middle of their top joint. And you hear you get, uh, it works okay, but just to do that you're inducing tension. A much simpler way is to relax the hand, make it, make it really relaxed. Put the thumb over the thumb hole and the third finger over the third finger hole. Just that. And then flop two and, and one. Whatever they have happened to fall is that your natural hand position on the recorder. Now how far is that hand position from the actual recorder itself? And you just slide up until you find it there. Can you see that? It's really a matter of millimetres from the natural position of my hand to the recorder itself and I'm covering the hole very well and I'm covering the holes very well with the weight of the fingers I'm not pushing down if you push down you will get some tension you might even get holes well, what does this teach us it teaches us that first of all if you go from one two and three you're inducing tension because you're pushing down and you're stretching which is the wrong way around. It also teaches us that we don't need to worry about covering the holes with the first joint. We can cover it with any part of the, the fingers that is relaxed for us. Number three, down, flop, two and one, slide up. And I'm actually covering, if I do press down here, uh, I'm covering the second hole with the top of the second middle joint and the first and the third holes are actually on the, on the top joint. As, are the holes being covered? Is air leaking out? No. Then that's absolutely fine. I am at my most relaxed. Same thing for the for the right hand. Thumb positioning we can talk about later. But just for me, I'm going to put it between uh, four and five, and then flop down three. It's natural. Not flop down three. Place three, place six, flop four and five. They're quite close together. <laughs> Maybe I just flop them that way. Slide up. Again, it's a matter of millimetres. Are they over the hole? Yes, they are. Absolutely no tension at all. As for the thumb position, what do you do? Well, you put it anywhere between four and five. Under four, under five, doesn't matter. Put it on your lip, bottom lip. Where does it balance? Where can you uh, flop down six? There. Slide up to three. Uh, slide up to four and five. I may adjust it a little bit and I'm actually adjusting it now to between three and four and that is the most natural position for me. I don't experience any tension in my hands at all. The first time you do this you may find it's uncomfortable, it's too light, you're holding a recorder too much. And or air is coming out, you know, air is leaking. Mm. You have to get used to it. One of the biggest enemies of playing the recorder is not being aware of how much tension you are inadvertently putting into the instrument. I've had students who are, look really, really tense, but they claim to be relaxed. Now they probably are relaxed in their mind. They've gotten used to this level of tension and they call that relaxed. We have to be aware that we're actually doing this. If the sound isn't pure, it's open, free, if it's none of these things, you've got tension somewhere. So let's look at that. That's the first principle of holding the recorder. Let's recap that. Thumb, hit down three, flop, two and one, slide. Thumb, hit down six, flop, five and four. And you can check. That's principle number one. That actually solves a lot of problems. The second 
principle of recorder playing is counterintuitive. If you play piano, you relax on the keys and you push down. You play trumpet, you have valves, you relax on the valves and push down. The same for the flute, for the oboe, for any string instrument. You relax on the strings and you push down. You induce tension to get the fingers down. On the recorder, it's the exact opposite. I've become very relaxed on the recorder with everything done. I'm not worried about number seven yet. That kind of comes a bit later. For the moment, just until six. So I'm re relaxed. And what then happens? I have to think about lifting up, lifting up, lifting up. Now, what happens on the way down? The weight of the fingers relax the muscles on the way down and they flop. And the flop speed is enough to create a pop. You can hear the pop. But what about on the way up? If you have tension in the fingers, you stick and there's no pop. You might slide a little bit, you might hold it down too much. You may have what we call sticky fingers. So let's look at that sticky finger problem using the combination of the E to the F. Okay, typically, if you have sticky fingers, you may get something like this. You're inducing tension by holding the recorder. You have to release that tension and then you have to lift up. That's a double step. That's the inefficient. Okay, simply, I'm flopped on the recorder, really relaxed, playing the E, and then I'm thinking only about lifting the finger one up the way. If I do it up the way, I can then get a click or a pop, which actually mirrors the pop of popping of it coming down again. The down is relaxed, the up is the pop. Now what about, that's E to F sharp actually, what about E to F? Well, for the F finger, the second finger, I'm letting it relax at the same time as the up. One more time. They're both popping or clicking at the same time. And the speed of that pop and click is enough to create this very vibrant, this very sharp, this very accurate kind of finger articulation. Now what about coming back down again? I'm on the F fingering, which is 0, 2. I'm going to focus on the up of the two and let one pop down. It's exactly the same, the principle is the same. You're always focusing on the up movement and letting the down movement create its own pop. The weight of the fingers and the speed of the down is okay. If you're tense, the down will be, will be very slow. If you're tens, the up will also be very slow, as relaxed as possible. Each creates their own pop. If you're not relaxed, you can't do this. <laughs> A bit more. A bit of condensation in there. You get the idea. There's no way the fingers will move that quickly with that clarity. I mean, you can play fast. But there's so much, so much tension there. That's what we're aiming for. Finally, recap. Principle number one is flop on the recorder, as relaxed as possible, as close to your own hand position as you can make. And just slide up. And then, second principle is you're up. You're popping up or clicking up and relaxing down. You should be as relaxed on the recorder as possible. Bless you. And finally, I just want to say one thing. Do the 20 minute exercise. It's extremely boring, but do it once in your life. It one month, every day, play a low G for 20 minutes.
just do that for 20 minutes. Set off a timer and just play it. The, this exercise is very good for many, many things, but in terms of fingering, just do it and think about, I'm going to relax my fingers as I'm playing the notes. I want to see how relaxed I can be. There's probably no change on the video, but in my head and in micro movements in my fingers, I'm gradually relaxing them. You can try it, inducing tension and then releasing the tension during the long note. And you can find yourself, your own body's reaction to tension and relaxation. But play the G for 20 minutes and just one or two of these, of these 31 days, you're focusing on tension and relaxation so that you are completely at home on the recorder, playing the G as relaxed as possible. It's not, it becomes a part of you. It becomes a part of who you are, a part of your body. So that's enough for the moment. Bye for now.